Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024 here at the MGM. We are closing out two full jam-packed days of coverage. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside Dave Vellante, analyst, co-host, co-founder of theCUBE. It's, it's been a time, it's been a couple of days. I've learned a lot. I'm, yeah. I'm excited about this new era. I was excited coming in. I'm even more excited now. Well, okay, well, let's, let's really talk about this. I'm once again surrounded by analysts. I'd like to welcome Vaiba Bansal. He is the VP at Everest Group. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Vaiba. And also Anish Nath, Practice Director at Everest Group. Thank you so much, Anish. So, why don't you start by just, because I know it was news It was news to you, just how big Everest Group is and, and what they're all about. So why don't you begin by telling us about your research focus areas, your research agenda? How about you? Why don't you start out, Anish? Sure. So um, Everest Group is a research and advisory firm, uh, primarily focusing into multiple areas, right? Uh, so we have some of the research going on on the, some of the horizontal areas. Uh, so we cover finance and accounting research, HR outsourcing, uh, procurement outsourcing, uh, apart from that, we have some of the research on the vertical side as well, which is focused on BFSI or healthcare, some of the other vertical specific areas. Apart from that, we also look into enterprise resource uh, planning, ERP software research, uh, also on the cloud market we have. So it's varied across some of the business process services areas, as well as some of the IT services areas. And so this is one part of it on the services side, but apart from that on the product side as well, right? Uh, we cover the intelligent automation space, uh, and we cover some of the other product areas. So I would say it's a broad range of areas that we cover, and uh, we publish reports, uh, size the markets, do the vendor landscaping. Apart from that, we also, like I said, it's a research and advisory firm. So this part is on the research side. So on the advisory side, we also help our clients if they have some bespoke questions they want support with. So it's more or less a consulting engagement where we provide our expert opinion to them and in their areas of need. Whether you would want to add anything? Yeah, no, I think mostly covered, uh, especially, uh, yeah, you know, as compared to many other analysts from, I think that's a, uh, that's a bit of a differentiator. Uh, the entire custom advisory and content strategy support part, uh, where we have advised a number of clients on different problems, especially on marketing, sales, strategy, and a number of those kind of areas. Yeah, that's traditional here. So how should we think about this market? I mean, is it... I mean, do we segment this, say, okay, RPA, now we're going to build intelligent automation on top of it. Do you guys look at it more as intelligent automation as a whole? How do you, sort of, what's your taxonomy look like for this space? Yeah, so uh, let, me, let me take that up, right? So if we talk about, uh, you know, the entire evolution, right? So we, of course, uh, 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 say 10 years back, right? So all we knew about automation was maybe uh, script-based automation, right? And it all started with testing and then went into other areas. And then slowly, uh, RPA came into picture and we had uh, robotics or rules-based automation, uh, robotic desktop automation and robotic process automation, right? And for example, companies like UiPath have been pioneers of that. Then uh, I think in the past uh, three to four years, what we've been largely hearing is intelligent automation, uh, right? Uh, where uh, AI started getting embedded, especially the deterministic AI. Uh, you know, so we had more productized versions of AI also coming up in the form of, say, intelligent document processing or conversational AI, right? So, 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 so that's how the market got evolved. In the past one to two years, all we've been hearing of is Gen AI and LLMs, right? So that's kind of infusion of more probabilistic AI into the traditional AI. So, uh, and Gen AI has created, uh, you know, a lot of possibilities which didn't exist a couple of years back. And today, where we are, now uh, all of us are hearing of agentic AI or agentic process automation, right? So, which is a, a uh, you know latest kid on the block, uh, and again, I, I, I think for us, we see all of this as an extension, right? So, uh, agentic process automation, uh, we really believe is going to be disruptive. Uh, it's not going to be just another incremental technology, but it's going to have a disruptive impact on the entire automation landscape, and uh, that's that's what really resonates with us. How large is this that market and? Why is it so, why is it not bigger? Because it seems like the TAM is infinite. Every business process you know, can be automated. So huge potential, uh, but, but roughly, what are we talking about in terms of the whole thing, hardware, software, services? Okay, so uh, maybe just maybe picking on the last question first. So there are different markets which are individual, right? So for example, RPA has a separate market, which is standalone RPA. Similarly, if you talk about document processing, it's a standalone market, conversation layer, et cetera. 
then we are seeing the emergence of intelligent automation platforms, which is basically combination of these technologies together. So some of the enterprises prefer a best-in-class platform which has some of these capabilities rather than a best of breed which is looking at each individual area and then picking the software from there. And now we are adding Agentic AI which is again a layer on top of it and like I think Daniel mentioned it's like a super set of everything that comes underneath right. So overall if I have to say around if I talk about the intelligent automation software market size uh, which is all the individual components as well as the platform without the agentic part as of now, that would be somewhere around, uh, as per our estimation, 10 to $15 billion, the software market size. Um, and if I talk about agentic, I believe that uh, it's too early to maybe predict the market at this point, which might be very small, uh, but probably around 50 million or so. Yeah. yeah, somewhere in the range of 60 to 70 million is our initial estimate. And we are talking about a very specific category of agentic AI products. Uh, of course, not saying today. You say a million. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's nascent. I mean, obviously, very, you know this. Yeah. But, but the potential is, Thank I, mean, you. I, don't, I don't even know how you, I mean, it's every process, right? I mean, it's huge. It's a, yeah, to potentially answer. hundreds of billions in TAM. No, I agree. Uh, if, we, if we consider TAM, uh, that's actually going to be very uh, huge. And even like today, it might just be 60 to 70 million, which itself is a decent number to start with. Uh, but uh, over the next couple of years, you could actually see a CAGR of more than 100% and maybe a 50% plus CAGR for the next five years. So, so, so those are the kind of numbers we can expect. Uh, but yes, TAM uh, is going to be enormous. Uh, I mean, one reason why probably the market size hasn't grown as much as what we could have expected is, I, again, it's, it's still not saturated, right? So uh, we could, we probably still have addressed just 25% of the market. The remaining 70, 75% is still uh, kind of, you know, uh, yet to be explored. And by, when I say that, I mean even some basic digital transformation efforts or uh, things as simple as RPA, right? So they also haven't found enough adoption till now. Uh, of course, RPA is still one of the more mature ones. Uh, yeah, so, so that's, that's the reason, right? Uh, enterprises haven't really adopted it to that extent till now. And Go ahead. So Anish, here we are at UI Path Forward. I'm curious to hear what your take is on, on the messages that you're hearing from the main stage as well as the conversations that you're having here on the, on the show floor. Are you, are you buying what they're, what they're selling? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would say yes. Uh, to start with, I think obviously agentic process automation is the main theme that came out, right? Uh, some of the tools which made it real are enhancements to autopilot or maybe the agent builder software as well. But apart from these announcements, a couple of other things which I took from, uh, from the sessions here. Uh, one is the overall narrative that UiPath presented to us, right? I mean, it seemed like they were assimilating the different components over the years, be it RPA, IDP, process mining, et cetera. Now, topping it off with agentic and saying this is the complete story and this is what you need as a platform, right? I think that fit very well with what I was expecting and that actually holds a lot of promise in terms of what we can expect as being adopted by enterprises in the future. That is one. Uh, the second I would say uh, is about UiPath's positioning in the market as far as agentic AI is concerned. It's not only helping the enterprises with the agents, it's also acting as an orchestrator of different agents, right? So the positioning they're taking is maybe you have a Salesforce, maybe you have an SAP, you have agents from there, but what we will help you with is providing the orchestrator through which there might be different agents, but we will help you orchestrate and make this run seamlessly. So I think that is one messaging and positioning in the market, which I think will definitely benefit UiPath because as we know, there are many systems deployed and there might be many agents. All of uh, the big companies are talking about agents, but to act as the point which can orchestrate and tie everything together, I think that's, that's definitely strong. How do, you, how do you guys think about um, embedded AI generally and, and I guess agentic embedded in applications specifically? So you're seeing you know, Salesforce makes a big announcement, Microsoft's doing its co-pilots, Oracle announced, you know, a, a number of agents at its, at its cloud world, on and on and on. Palantir, just, I mean, virtually every software company is going to have embedded, which makes it harder to count, I presume. <laughs> and, uh, but how do you think about that dynamic versus what UiPath and others are doing in terms of being what Daniel calls Switzerland, 
and and how do you think that uh, market will those markets will evolve? Are we, I guess, may, maybe more specific question: Will we have just many many? Will we continue the stovepipe siloed application world, or will Agentic be able to break that mold? Yeah. So uh, I think uh, talking about the you know, entire landscape today, uh, you're right, like a lot of these enterprise platforms are coming up with, uh, you know, their own uh, agent TK offerings as well, right? So Salesforce has agent force and similarly service now and others are coming up with their offerings. Uh, so uh, talking a bit about the entire ecosystem, right? So you have uh, hyperscalers who have been doing it for some time, right? So you have Microsoft and Google of the world who have their agent frameworks. Uh, and uh, like you mentioned, right, we have enterprise platforms. Then uh, we have some startups, right, who are AI native and doing a lot of innovation and disruption in this space. At the same time, we have intelligent automation legacy players and uh, UiPath is one of them, but there are others uh, in intelligent automation space, even adjacent spaces, conversational AI and so on, right? So the market is definitely crowded and everybody will come up with their own agents, which are, which, which are embedded in their existing applications. I think each of these players will have their own strengths, right? So if uh, you want to have an agent for say, you know, you're, uh, related to CRM or your sales and marketing, maybe Salesforce is a good bet, right? So similarly, want to do something on the IT services management side, maybe ServiceNow is a good bet, right? And similarly, if you're already onboarded on a, say a conversational AI platform, maybe agentic, you can use agents, right? Which are on that platform. So I think one good thing which uh, UiPath is really doing is not trying to be the player, right? So they are trying to be the orchestrator, right? Uh, building a platform which can help you bring everything together, at the same time being agnostic and understanding that, you know, they are not going to own the entire market, but they can, you know, play that role which actually gives them a, uh, access to the entire market. So, I think that's how the market is going to shape up. There will be a coexistence of a number of players, uh, but somebody who is playing that orchestrator role uh, is in the driver's seat. According so interesting, so the world of application stovepipes doesn't go away, yeah. it just becomes maybe less painful. Yes, yeah. yes. And then like you said, right, I mean the TAM is huge. Uh, we will have to see whether the market size can reach close to the TAM. Uh, but there is place for many categories of players as Weber pointed out. So like uh, maybe a Salesforce and ServiceNow, they also succeed. And at the same time, players such as UiPath, who is, who is acting as the orchestrator, an open ecosystem player, that also succeeds. So we'll wait and see. Ha having, having said that, right, one thing I'll just want to add is uh, we do expect a lot of consolidation also in the space, right? It's not to say that everybody, you know, will, will flourish, right? So uh, especially, you know, some of the startups, uh, they might get, uh, you know, easily acquired by some of these bigger players. Uh, so so we, we could see that uh, happening pretty actively in the next couple of years. Are you talking about automation startups? You're talking about LLM startups, both? I'm talking more about uh, startups uh, who are, uh, who have started with Gen AI or Agentic AI, mm -hmm. right? So who are AI native, have done a lot of good work, uh, probably don't have that much clout in the market or maybe just, you know, want to build a good product and then sell it out, right? Yeah. I'm talking about those kind of startups. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, fill, a, fill a gap for some larger company that is behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what are you guys seeing in terms of Gen AI spending patterns? I see some stuff on your website, so you may have some insights there, and if you don't, I apologize. But are, are, are people you know, stealing from other budgets to fund Gen AI, Cause, and, 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 and Gen AI is not self-funding yet, it's not throwing off enough cash to be self-funding. Um, are you seeing that change? People complaining about, not complaining about, but just pointing out that the ROI is not obvious quite yet. IT budgets overall, are pretty tepid. The growth isn't huge, maybe three and a half percent, a little bit above GDP. What, what are you guys seeing in all that? So I would say to start with, I think uh, 2023 overall was the year of expectation, uh, experimentations. So there were a lot of POCs, pilots. There wasn't a dedicated budget for Gen AI at all. It was maybe a fraction or some percentage of the overall IT budget that and most of the enterprises had. 2024, we expected a lot of production use cases born out of the POCs or pilots and the learnings from them. Unfortunately, we haven't seen that to materialize. Um, in fact, I mean, we did some uh, surveys and studies as well. We got to know that, I mean, most of the POCs pilots are still failing. Having said that, at least there are a few enterprises who are brave and bold enough to start it and they have dedicated budgets of their own 
afford Gen AI. So that is something that we are seeing, but I won't call it as a trend because this is not something which is happening at the mass scale. These are very few enterprises who are actually doing that. And most of the others are actually waiting for those enterprises to get their hands dirty, learn from the mistakes, and then probably start on their own. And, uh, you know, to add to that, right, so, uh, of course, Gen AI didn't have that much impact as probably it was expected, right, uh, maybe one, one and a half years back. Uh, and, of course, there have been reasons, right, uh, data security and privacy has been, I would say, the topmost, the cost of using LLMs has been another one, uh, you know, hallucination and explainability, and we, I think we all kind of read about some of these reasons, but they, that have inhibited. At the same time, I think Gen AI has worked wherever it has augmented existing technologies, right? So, uh, it, 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 wherever it has assisted existing knowledge, right? But it hasn't really led to, you know, in, uh, you know, big gains in terms of end-to-end -end automation or making it real. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, task-based automation it has worked, but you know, end-to-end -end automation that's where we are hoping a Gen AI will work. Yep. Do you guys have any research that you want to share with the audience? Um, some recent research or things you're working on that we should be aware of? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, one that we completed a few months back. Uh, so maybe let me start with the Peak Matrix. So Peak Matrix is our flagship research report wherein we compare different providers, right? I Maybe on the services side or on the product side. Uh, we have comprehensive RFIs, uh, we conduct briefings with the different providers, we get to know what their capabilities are, what their vision are, how much, how, how well are they performing in the market, what kind of growth they're seeing, and so on and so forth. Based on that, we have a two by two matrix where we position different providers. And this typical process takes about four to six months. Uh, what we are doing at this point is we are starting to be a bit more nimble in our, in our efforts. Uh, by that I mean, in some of these areas, these are changing very heavily and very quickly, right? Especially agentic, uh, intelligent automation, etc. We see that there is value to doing these kind of research at a quick rate, at a high frequency, rather than waiting for four to six months to come up with this. So, one of the new constructs that we have come up with is called Innovation Watch, and we have published one recently on agentic AI. Uh, we'll probably continue with a newer version or maybe upgrade it to a peak matrix soon. Uh, but that is something at least related to the theme of this entire event I wanted to highlight. So also, uh, you can expect a lot of, uh, you know, uh, viewpoints and blogs coming out on Agentic AI. I think one or two of them are already out. We are working on, uh, you know, our uh, kind of a comprehensive viewpoint on Agentic AI. And then uh, I think there, there'll be further, uh, which break it down into multiple components. And so we'll, we'll, we'll have a lot of that coming out. Uh, we might be doing a peak metrics, uh, uh, you know, research on this area as well next year. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Thank Anish, Anish Baba, thank you both so much. This has been a really pleasure having you on the show. Thank nice. you guys for having me. And that is a wrap for theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. We have a huge behind the scenes crew that we also want to thank, and that is Christian and Alex and Andrew and Jay, and of course Brent on the UiPath side. So thank you all so much. Thank you for watching. We will catch you next time. This has been theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage.